So, so this is for the first time we are going to have this event called Pentathlon at AIOS. We all know the power of five. Here we have five teams. So if we are ready, we'll start. So we have five teams, five members in each team who are doing five events for five minutes. And we have five judges. So the five teams are the eye opener led by Dr. Pius Bansal, the eye catchers led by Dr. Chaitra Jayadev, the eye poppers, Dr. Anurag, is he here? Dr. Anurag Mishra. Anyone from Dr. Anurag's team can call Dr. Anurag. Anurag is here? Yeah, thank you. Dr. Jayantadas leading the eye washers and the eye candies led by Dr. Ashini Kumar. Yes, thank you. So before that, we have our respected judges. I would request Dr. Valla to come forward, please. Dr. Rajay Arora is here already. Dr. Ruma Das, please come forward, ma'am. Dr. Kasturi Vattacharya, is she here? Not yet. Dr. Shatayi Sinha, he was just sitting outside right now. So, Dr. Jayagopal Agarwal, if you are kind enough to do the judging here, if you can join in here. Shatayi will be here. Kasturi is not here yet. I'll call Dr. Satyajit. So, I would now request the five teams. Now, Dr. Doyal unfortunately couldn't join in because her daughter was taken ill and had a surgery. Uh, she had gallstone removed. So, she was the showstopper anyway. So, for the eye openers, Dr. Pius Bansal's team can uh, take a row. Dr. Pius Bansal, Dr. Arvind Maria, Dr. Varad Gudnani, Dr. Richa Gupta, and Dr. Ankit Agarwal. Yeah. So, for the team uh, eye catchers, Dr. Rolika Bansal, Anand Venik, yeah. So, I can see all of them here. Good. Angshuman has to move to the other team now, probably. Dr. Jayanta Das team, Dr. Maitri Das, Dr. Jayanta Das, Maitri Di, if you can move there, Dr. Devargo, and Dr. Achana Kumari is there. So, for the team eye candies, we have Dr. Ashini Kumar, Dr. Divedi. Dr. Neha Kumari, Dr. Rushmika Singhla, and Dr. Sharad. Dr. Sharad, joining. And for the eye poppers, we have Dr. Ashish Majumdar, Dr. Anurag Mishra is joining, Dr. John Shortkar is there, Dr. Ashok Nanda, and Dr. Himani Chatterjee. She is coming, okay. So, this session is dedicated to Dr. Ajay Pal, whom we lost few few weeks back. And this was his, ob hey, excuse me, this is not playing here. So all the time I'm just talking rubbish. So you have to tell me. If you, if you can show it on the screen, please. Shall I go there? Shall I go there? Yeah. So I'll go back to the team if required. So this was Dr. Ajay Pal's message after participating in that. 
and we are fortunate that Dr. Chaitra, Dr. Piyush Bansal was there judging and they have agreed to participate in place of judging. So uh, thank you Chaitra and uh, Piyush and thank you for choosing your team. And this was the message from Dr. Ajay Pal and we will be dedicating this session to Dr. Ajay Pal. No, it's okay. It's here, five of you. Dr. Shatina. Yeah, please join in there. So I'll just go back quickly. So the power of five, as I have said, and we have our judges. So Dr. Jayagopal Agarwal has kindly agreed to do the judging in place of uh, Dr. Kasturi Bhattacharya. We have all the team now settled. So we'll start with one minute video which will be marked by 25 marks on total. So just give 25 out of 25 and write the name of the team if possible. <coughs> out of, mark out of 25 please. Then we have, uh, we have the quiz slightly later because Dr. Bansal has to move to the next session. So We'll have the jam next. Again, please mark on 25 marks. And I'll be handing over the cheat to the, uh, uh, to the speaker 30 seconds before the speech and you can Google it and speak on it. Either for or against, it's up to you. Then we have quiz. Then we have this unscrambling where we'll be showing 10 ophthalmic uh, terms and you have to unscramble them. And we have Five marks for right answer, there is no negative marking. And lastly, we have to identify the celebrity. So a pair of eyes will be shown and it will be gradually increased uh, and uh, five marks will be becoming less. So if you guess in the first go, you will get 25. Second guess, 20, then 15 and it will gradually go less. If you get a wrong guess, then five marks will be deducted but you can still proceed ahead. So let's begin the pentathlon. And first of all, I'll call the team. So whoever is presenting the video for Dr. Pius Bansal's team can come forward. So yeah. So it's a one minute video, if you can kindly put the timer to one minute. One is video, one is extempore, one is quiz, one is unscramble and other is identifying from the celebrity eyes. So we have to mark only the video. video and the extempore as well. The team is eye openers, Dr. Pius Banshal eye openers, oh thank you. Yeah, you can write the presenter. Yeah. It's eye catchers, Dr. Pius Bansal. Can I begin? Yeah, so one minute, please. Hi, judges. Uh, and I'll be speaking about uh, intraocular foreign body removal through the anterior route as against the traditional uh, uh, scleral route. So, you know, you see this patient. Uh, the light off, the light off, light. Timer, so sort of stop, KJ. So uh, you see that the uh, soft cataract uh, is being removed uh, using a cutter uh, from the anterior segment root, from the limbal root. And after clearing out all the lens material and making openings, you go in, make a scleral uh, uh, port, and then you uh, do a vitrectomy. You can see the blood-stained vitreous, 
do a PVD induction and after removing most of the vitreous, then the next step would be to remove the foreign body. Now instead of removing it from the scleral side, we pick it up with a magnet, you hold, uh, use a uh, foreign body holding forcep through the limbal root, put in a, a loop and then get out uh, the foreign body through the scleral incision itself. Now the advantage over here was that you can bring it out through the uh, anterior root itself because the capsular uh, uh, opening was, uh, was not complete. You, the laser was done for uh, the area of impact. So that is quick before time. Thank you. So judges, if you want to ask any question before marking short question, one short question with quick answer. A microphone. Yes. There. This was an exactly one minute video. This is eye catches. Eye so catcher. Though, it was a pretty big foreign body, so it, uh, you know, uh, to make sure that it doesn't fall inside, you, it was just uh, convenient to use a rectus to get it out. Uh, I don't think so because uh, it, uh, I mean, it, uh, we already brought it out over the iris and then used the rectus to, uh, to take it out. And there was a chance of already the endothelium or? Uh, I, that's, that was, uh, that's definitely there, but then uh, the incision was uh, made accordingly, and then uh, we made sure that, uh, you know, it was under uh, hydro, so there was no endothelial damage. But it was always, uh, there was always that. But size matters? Uh, of course it matters, sir, but uh, the only thing is that ma instead of making a large scleral incision, and then uh, making the, uh, picking up the, uh, bringing the foreign body out from there, which we usually do, since there was uh, a, 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 a capsular loss, uh, there was a posterior, uh, uh, posterior capsular uh, uh, break. It was just more convenient to get it out uh, through the limbal root. So, next is Dr. Rolika Bansal for the IOPNS team presenting her video. One minute video. So, big cheers for Dr. Pius. Thank you very much. So, if you don't get hanged, Pius, if you don't get hanged, please do come back here to cheer your team. If you get hanged, then we have lost you. So after Rolika, it will be Dr. Jain Sodas for eye wash. Yeah, this is eye opener, Dr. Rolika Bansal. Please switch the... So basically, as Olympians are given a Herculean task in a pentathlon, we were also uh, given a patient with proctosis who presented to us with an intraocular, uh, with an extraocular lesion, and uh, we had to go in and do an excision biopsy by sub uh, sub uh, approach from the superotemporal area. We had to do layer to layer dissection, which was a very difficult task, of course, and uh, you had to make sure that you are above the operating margin and the periosteum was uh, constantly elevated. As you can see, very clean, neat periosteal elevation is extremely important to localize the tumor and you have to be very careful with these detections and you have to cauterize any of the blood vessels. Over here you can see that we have also tried to elevate the periosteum on the other side so that we can do a margin or two. And as we can very neatly go around the fat and here the lesion comes out. It's not easy as it looks but these lesions are difficult and cryo-assisted delivery of the lesion was done. And after that, we have to make sure that we have taken care of the vascular pedicle posteriorly and layer by layer closure as well as performed. So this was a cavernous hemangioma, which was histopathologically proven as well. So questions for Dr. Rolika. One short question. No, it's spellbound. Everyone is spellbound. Yeah. Mike or Akhyan either. Marks from eye openers will be cut if you make negative. That was a wonderful video, Rolika. Thank you, sir. Uh, how many such cases have you done? 
You so yourself have done it? So these are not the cases that are operated by me, myself, my mentor, Dr. Santosh Shunnava. He's the one who's the surgeon for all these cases. Okay. We have a private practice, so these cases are operated by him solely. Okay. Right. And we have seen a case series of more than 80 cases that we did in the past uh, 13 years itself. And in 13 years, uh, it's there in the acknowledgement as well. Yeah. You told that even from angioma, how you uh, reading has you know, looked in your tackle? So, sorry, sir. Uh, it is hemangioma, and you are using cryo. And how you, uh, after uh, removal of the tumor, how you uh, manage the hemangioma? So the, when we uh, take out the tumor with cryo-assisted delivery, after that the pedicle is very carefully cauterized there and then. So we don't pull on the tumor. If we pull on, and there will be a bleeding. Very slowly, we dissect around the pedicle and we cauterize it. The, pe the, the area doesn't bleed then. Have you showed that the uh, pedicle is with the tumor when you are remo removing from Right, inside? sir. So when we are doing the dissection posteriorly, we have to be very careful. We cannot just, like this is a one minute video, but this was an actually a two hour long surgery. So we have to be very careful and we have to make sure that we go with the dissectors and pull it along. And with the dissector also, we can palpate. Where is that area where which is the pedicle? So in that section we are careful, and when when we pull a traction around it, slowly we go underneath, and uh, with the demos also we can uh, uh, give us a, a good visualization, and we cauterize the pedicle. We so don't have post-operative. So it is a difficult there. procedure. Definitely. Sir. Thank you. So this was Dr. Rolika Bansal for the judges from the team Eye Opener. So next we have. The team captain, Dr. Jayanto Dash from the eye washers for the one minute video. So video more than one minute will get some minus marking probably. The stuck eye well haptic, what should you do? Various techniques are adopted by different surgeons such as releasing the tailing haptic by a Sinsky hook, push and pull technique by the plunger, radial cut on the cartridge, implanting the IOL with broken haptic, but none of them are satisfactory. Here, the author demonstrates a useful technique to manage this situation. He holds the plunger with his left hand and using his dominating right hand, he cuts a U-shaped block in the silicon plunger by a 15 degree knife. By the moment the U-shaped portion of the silicon plunger is separated, the tailing haptic gets released automatically. As prevention is better, the situation can be avoided by using sufficient viscoelastic, proper loading of IOL in the cartridge, inspecting the cartridge under a microscope before implantation. Thank you. Thank you. So question for Dr. Jantodas. Next is Dr. Ashini Kumar it is from a the eye candies. Innovative one, innovative one in the sense earlier it was already mentioned, it was used by radial cut and ultimately whatever I gone through that in Google, they are pulling by a sense cube or other instruments. But in this technique, make a U cut and automatically it's release. Any chance of damaging the haptic while doing uh, this cut? Yes, sir. P very interesting and important question. So I always uh, inspect on the, under the microscope, focus on that particular area. I shift that microscope light to that area and I just around that, at least 2 mm, like a excision of any tumor, we, I just assess in 2 mm during the yucca, 2 to 3 mm away from that uh, area of the stuck area. So moment it's released, so there is no chance of that 3 mm, 3, 2 to 3 mm at least from the, the stuck area. A simpler method would be just to withdraw the plunger and then pr pr push it back again because normally what happens is the haptic gets stuck under the plunger. So uh, that would be a traumatic method of trying it. If that fails, yes, then sir. I think you can try this. Uh, That's why in, in, in that initial, my first presentation, I mentioned yeah. push and pull one technique, it's a one. But sometimes, in especially in winter and in, in case of some eye well, it's not possible. Then this is the, this is the innovation. Right. Yes, sir. Thank you very much. So, uh, Dr. Ashini, please. So, can we have a big round of applause for the team I Candies? Because this is the only team, the state team. All the other teams are mixed team. 
we have decided to go for Bihar team because this is for the first time AIUS midterm is being held, a history is being created, and it's in Bihar Padna. So we have a Bihar team, all the other teams are mixed team, but this is a pure, pure Bihar team. And Dr. Ashini Kumar, the captain, will be presenting the... One eight-year-old boy, Rohit, came to us with iris, with coloboma fire, coloboma fires, and his vision was contact with the close to face. And he could, his vision could not be improved by any means. So when he came to us at Mahavir Netralaya Patna, his vision improves to 6 by 6 with uniocular telescope. And to note, this telescope is not to be worn whole life. Because if we use it for half an hour daily for six months, then after six months with the brain adaptation, his vision will be improving much better with the standard uh, glasses. So the message is nothing, nothing is impossible in the light if you want to, if you really want to do it. You have to just have the junoon for the, to do something. So don't lose heart at any point of time. I am a disabled, but still I can do so much. So I have made myself especially able. So there's nothing to lose heart, if, even if you can't do it. Thank you. This was the video. You could see six six. By thanks to God. So I can say just one thing. Nothing is important in this world if God is there. Means this person went to several institutions, but his vision could not be improved. And I have got the 3,000 patients record. They have got improved. I have in the Excel reports, all the things. So I can, I have learned this from Shankar Netralaya and Alvi Prasad also. So I can make persons again workable. Thank you so much. Ashish, if you can get ready, if there is any question for Dr. Ashini Kumar, otherwise uh, for the eye poppers, Dr. Ashish Majumdar will be presenting this video. Any questions for Dr. Yeah. No questions, I just wanted to appreciate the efforts uh, you have taken because most of these patients, you know, uh, you give them a correction and, and uh, maximum probably do a laser around the coloboma. Uh, you really do not rehabilitate them, so it's a very good uh, thing that you have tried to rehabilitate them. Excellent, sir. Thank you very much. Dr. Aswini is doing a lot of low vision aid work in our part, and many a time we see that uh, the, the patients which are being rejected at no, several start, things. Don't start several clinics and other places. So he is, it is taking, being taken care by him and he, it takes a lot of effort. Thank you. Great. Hello everyone. I'm going to present a rare case of extreme cornea lictatia with granular dystrophy who has come with a thinning of 265 micron here first. Uh, um, anterior uh, one third of the lamella has been dissected out. Then with the help of point tip dissector, um, the posterior tunnella uh, is done. And then with the help of 30 gauge needle, air has been injected to form big bubble one. Then with the help of four petal technique, the uh, stroma of the uh, cornea has been dissected out from the predesmet layer. And uh, after dissecting out the, uh, the stroma from the predesmet layer, you can see a clear uh, cornea. And then after this, uh, the donor cornea is placed and 16 uh, monofilament nylon suture has been placed. After uh, one week, the post-op vision is FC 5 feet and six months, it's 636 vision. Thank you. Any questions for eye for eye poppers? So after this, we'll uh, 
So big cheers for Dr. Ashish. I think only the teams that respective teams are cheering. So we need the audience to cheer. <laughs> Dr. Kasturi, Dr. Jayagopal has taken your place because we had to start the thank you. But please be here. So we have now Dr. Arvind Kumar Moria for the eye catchers. So you have 30 seconds. You choose from the <coughs> And, and the and the rules and the rules are you will not stop in the middle, you will not repeat your words. That's what the rules are for jam sessions. I suppose the session the rules are same here. No, that's okay. But he should if he stops, if he stops, then do then do we stop him? If he repeats his words, yes. we stop what? him. Yes. No, 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 no. Let's, let's have the typical jam sessions we used to have in the medical colleges. One minute, one minute, you can use any language. <laughs> During my uh, freshers' welcome, during MBBS, they gave me a topic, O oh, Miss Dede Kiss. And I started, I am Suga, Sugato Palaochi from Japan, and I'll be speaking in Japanese and Cheng Fung Ching Fong, Ping Chong Fang, Fung Ting Fong Ping, Hong Ching Fong, Ting Fang, Fong Ting Tang Fing. And I went it for one minute and I got the prize. So, yeah. So, uh, you have to speak yeah, in English. I was telling you the tricks which we had to do in jam sessions many, many years back. Okay, go ahead. Yeah, so one minute starts, the timer is there. Your time starts now. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. So my topic is, if both these spouses, they are in the same medical profession, it's a truly a bliss sort of thing. And I totally agree with that thing. Because in life, it's all about loving, sharing, and caring. So if both these spouses, they are in the same field, so they can understand their problem, and they can stand for each other, they can, they can understand each and every part of their profession, right from the clinical part or the academics, they can help each other and they can grow sub uh, means exponentially in the respective field because of the help they can provide to each other without any uh, compromises. And regarding the kids also, if they are both from the same field, so the husband can operate in the morning time and the wife can Your operate in the evening time. time is up. Time. Thank you. You have Thank you. for one minute. So did he get the right message? I would, before the judge is marking, one judge will comment for each of the presentations. So for this, I'll request Dr. Ruma to comment. No, I'll request Dr. Uh, Satyajit for this because they are in the same. I, 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 I absolutely agree with Dr. Moria what he has said because I am in the same profession. We have our same spouse. I totally agree with this because my husband is also ophthalmologist. So when we quarrel also, we term we uh, like uh, we speak on ophthalmological terms. If you want to give. <laughs> So, uh, I totally agree with you. Thank you. So, Dr. Anand Vinikar, But, Maria, just one second. 
the the classical jam rules according to which you use the word they eight times normally but and you stopped once in the middle for just a fraction of a second i'm just saying but you did very well <laughs> I'm not being harsh. <laughs> Let's enjoy. You can, sir. Thank you. Excuse me. Gender bias exists in the mind of patients. Oh, nice. So 30 seconds, you can think about <laughs> This is the eye opener. I have six sheets, so one will be left over. One of the audience have to volunteer to speak. Let's see who volunteers. Honorable judges and my dear friends, gender bias exists among patients. I'd like to talk about gender bias existing among doctors. As ophthalmologists, as male ophthalmologists, one of the reasons we probably took ophthalmology was back when RPG was been happening, we would use direct ophthalmoscope and go really close to these female patients. My father was a male gynecologist. You should ask him about gender bias from patients. Today we have a women's ophthalmic society. When all my postgraduates come up to me in my room, I realize, hey, where are the guys? We have so many women in ophthalmology that I think we need to have a male ophthalmic society. Because women are so good by themselves, they don't need a society to propagate them. Uh, and I think the best women ophthalmologists make it on their own. So as far as patients are concerned and doctors are concerned, gender, bias definitely exists. The Supreme Court has now accepted the third gender, the transgender. Where does that bring us to a bias? I think all of us have to remember that male or female, we at the end of the day are humans first, doctors next, and ophthalmologists third. And I'm surprised my one minute is not over <laughs> and you guys are not stopping me. Ex excellent, Anand. Uh, because you know, it's just, just, just for the public, when you speak in a jam session, you go beyond one concept to the second concept, to the third, to the fourth, and that's what you did excellent. Well done, so, uh, just one second. So next team is Dr. Uh, the eye washers, and it's Dr. Moitri Dash. If you are ready, you just tell you are ready, we'll start. <coughs>
इधर घुमा लीजिए टाइमर को इधर घुमा लीजिए रिस्टार्ट कीजिए रिस्टार्ट कीजिए या आई हैव नॉट सेड इट रिस्टार्ट कीजिए रिस्टार्ट कीजिए या अ गुड इवनिंग एवरीबॉडी सो ऑल ऑफ यू नो व्हाट आई एम गॉट टू मेनी कॉन्फ्रेंसेस कॉजिंग ब्रेन फैटिग एंड ऑफथर्मोलॉजिस्ट आई एम इन फेवर ऑफ दिस बिकॉज Uh, from the beginning when i first started joining this uh, ophthalmic conferences it was the it was held in delhi that time so many doctors were there but the streams were not so many now the actually the branches are so many and to be to be in uh, uh, current with them uh, you have to choose actually the side branches and even after that also if you start uh, going to the conferences say for glaucoma what i i do it each time i see so many new things are coming so so many new things of course it is giving your brain tease it is not not possible for one person to keep in touch with all the subjects and all the matters so from the beginning i think all of you should be mentally oriented to be in a particular stream so that you can go to the extreme of it thank you so you have stopped before one minute actually yeah one okay. second before yes. that i should get yeah. some extra marks for this <laughs> i doctor i am totally agree with it yes the too much conferences too much uh, uh, symposiums these are all mind fatigue we this uh, actually we have certain capacity of our mind and the, the way the all conferences are coming with symposium and all uh, 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 that is uh, through the internet it is really mind bogging and it is very difficult to handle to be in touch situation. with yes I am totally agree with you. Yeah, thank you so much, sir. I think everyone will agree. Mm. Any comments? So, the next presenter is Dr. Ajit Kumar Divedi. So you can choose any, mini, mini, more if you really want to choose. Again, this is regarding conference. So, you say, Dr. Divedi, ophthalmic conferences have become more. conferences has become more of a public relation exercise than a scientific one dr divedi will be speaking for the team i candies team i candies <coughs> after this i will require a volunteer to do the scoring for the uh, for the other session so the judges can help as well but a volunteer will be required so if you are ready whenever you are ready just 30 seconds someone is i think you are already prepared your mind is working very fast <laughs> one minute timer yes yeah, timer to one minute please so dr divedi is speaking on ophthalmic conferences has become more of a public relations than scientific sessions restart dr chaitra will not agree she is becoming standing for the scientific good restart again actually yeah time starts now Uh, good evening and uh, really uh, it's a very interesting topic given to me and uh, i think it's a concern for the whole of the society and i'm in favor of that one because the large conferences which we see in every places it's just becoming a uh, huge halls large halls everybody is disoriented where to go where to find and how to meet them and you if you see the attendance the mainly because it's because of the we want more people to gather at one place and we are giving it the more attentions are given especially in the small conferences sub specialty conferences where they want to learn something but definitely it's a just a socializing and also i can tell you that's why the life beyond ophthalmology is becoming very popular in large conferences you see a sports the people are going there the people are talking about that one they are playing table tennis here and you will see a lot in upcoming days where chess will be upcoming thank you very much thank you sir thank you so comment from dr walla please i i, I agree that dr but walla was the scientific committee chairman of dos so he is agreeing <laughs> that is more of a public please see see note it down what i'll, <laughs> what I'll say is 
uh, whenever conferences are held, they are held basically to propagate science. And if besides that, besides learning, besides teaching, besides inculcating new things, gathering new gadgets, you do socializing also, I think there is nothing wrong in that. But if just to say that it is more for just building public relations and socializing, that is not true. The main concept still remains to propagate science, to teach science, to teach our residents. And I think the primary purpose is still being served. Yes, no harm in having a little bit of fun with being serious. I think nothing wrong with that. Thank you very Thank much you. for your valuable comments. So I think the hall will disagree that there are scientific sessions which we go to learn as well. But yes, beyond ophthalmology is coming up. But you did very well. Can I have a counter view? Yes. <laughs> so it's a really, it's a region in a position where you cannot, I think, uh, agree on that segment. But it's uh, what we feel, being a, 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 a middle generation ophthalmologist, when we attend conferences, and if you have a large number of halls, so, uh, and you have two to three presentations, it's very difficult to give, give the attentions and everything. So that's one point. So, and uh, when you are focused in uh, one segment, you get more out of that one. Definitely there is a public presence Definitely. people recognize. Thank you, sir. So the next, for the eye poppers, none other than Dr. Anurag Mishra. He's a very good speaker, so hopefully he will do justice. So you choose or shall I ask one of the audience to choose? No, you choose, okay. <laughs> and before, So surgeon, even those in private sector like Anurag, should have a mandatory retirement age. I'm not saying whether it's 80 or 60, but should have a mandatory retirement age like the government doctors have. And your 30 seconds starts now. Can I have a volunteer, Dr. Mathur? Can you volunteer for the next one, please? It will be a good one. Or shall I give Anurag to choose? So Dr. Mathur will be speaking next. You have a few minutes to think about. More medicos among the lawmakers of the country will improve the health infrastructure. More medicos among the lawmakers of the country will improve the health infrastructure. Dr. Mathur will be speaking for one minute next, sir, from the audience. Up until this evening, Sugatu, I always thought you were a friend of mine. See, to get good health, I am asking you to retire <laughs> at certain age, maybe at 80, maybe 90, maybe 60. So time starts now if you are ready. Timer, please. Good evening, Maverick judges and benevolent ladies and gentlemen. Greetings and regards from the land of Lord Jagannath. I disagree to this concept. There are several reasons for it. I'll not outline them in numericals or in alphabets. However, I would like to bring to your notice a few things. It is said that a doctor is able to work or capable of working till he goes to the deathbed himself. You can bury him, you cannot bury his skills. So there should not be any retirement age, not for a doctor, whether or not he works in a private sector or a government sector. In the government sector, people are asked or forced to retire because somebody else is paying their salary. In the private sector, you earn for yourself, you live yourself, you thrive yourself, you strive to earn and you strive to excel in every possible field. By saying this, I give a strong message to all of you, ladies and gentlemen. I'm a fitness freak. I work out one and a half hours every day. Work out, calculate your calories, stay healthy, stay happy, work till you drop, and do not retire from your work. Thank you. Very well, Speaker Manurag. So, uh, comment from Dr. Ruma, please. Can I the go? microphone. Yeah. Respected house, I totally agree with Dr. Anura because the retirement age uh, in India is varies from place to place. Like I am from Assam, so our government has increased our retirement age up to 70 years. And other states, I think it is 65. So to me, if one can continue, he should continue. There should not be any retirement age for it whether it is a public sector or a government sector. So if someone is forced to retire at the age of 70, if he cannot, so 
there must be some other procedure. But if he can or she can continue, for the, want, continue. Of, for the want of 30 more seconds, uh, Bhalla sir, you wanted to say something? Uh, if this, uh, in medical field it is okay. But uh, Anurag, what about the surgical fields? If surgeon is as so fit, I'll, I'll, uh, ju just a minute, yeah. is as fit, alert, agile, and with good reflexes like you have, I'm sure you're going to have similar kind of reflexes even after 30 years. But what about general ophthalmologists <laughs> whose hands start shaking, have tremors, and posterior capsule, mind you, is just four micron thick. You're playing with a tissue where your tissues are not under your control. Sir, you don't what about have that? To, you don't have to operate not to retire. I as a surgeon, you, you may retire. retire, but as a physician, you can go on and utilize your knowledge for the benefit. I have built my place with a lot of blood being thinned, <laughs> thinned out into water and sweat. I would definitely like to see my place grow every single day. So I would not retire. I might not operate. I didn't say anything about operating. I might not be a surgeon. I might just be an administrator going to the hospital and overseeing things that are happening around. For the want of 30 seconds more, I just missed out on this point. I would just like to expand this. When I leave my hospital, for my hospital every day in the morning, it's a clear-cut instruction coming from my clear voice at home that please, you know to whom, please do not call me up when I'm operating unless the sky is falling. Despite of this instruction, every day the sky falls and every day I receive several telephone calls. It's okay. When I'm a little distant away, I certainly would not like the sea to, to see the sky falling every minute and stay back home to face it all. So obviously, I would like to scoot away to the hospital till I die. <laughs> Thank you. And you know, maybe Anurag, because you are such a freak uh, with instruments, over. then once you once you are not able to operate with your hands, you will have the robotic surgery coming in, and, and you will probably control things uh, by a voice control. So, uh, thank you, Dr. Mathur, for volunteering this one. And uh, thank you, uh, Anurag. So, yes, Dr. Mathur's time starts now. Dr. Arora will be marking him. <laughs> yes, <laughs> no, I'm just joking. <laughs> yeah. So, thank you, Dr. Sugato, for giving me this opportunity. Uh, for any endeavor to succeed, there has to be a right mix of technique management and administration. We have seen the efforts of Dr. Harshwardhan when he was the health minister. Was he a successful minister in handling the health department? He was not up to the mark. Then came Mansuk Mandavia. He is doing a reasonably good job. What the technical professionals, every department, every profession requires is their technical expertise. Doctors are there to guide, take policy decisions. Equal amount is required is proper administration, proper implementation and execution of policies by the respective departments. A comprehensive team is that what matters for the benefit and success of any project. What I strongly advocate right from my day for a few years back, this came to my mind when there can be an Indian administrative service, why should not there be a Indian medical service? And the, with the right mix of politicians from the health sector, in the parliament, in the assemblies, and along with the technical expertise of administrators and project implementators, the, any project can be implemented to the ultimate success. Thank you all. Thank you. So without much delay, uh, we'll go to the quiz section and now we'll be moving backward from thing. Uh, so you have all marked this, so I'll collect in a bit if uh, you have to go away. Or I'll be asking the question, you have to answer. You can come here, Ash. You have to pick your cheat. So I have got two marks from here. So which one, whichever you want to pick. Choose all difficult questions, don't worry. No, the quiz are very easy questions. So if you can go there, so this is one. 
So there are 10 questions in one minute. How many you can answer, you can answer. And uh, no visual quiz. there is uh, 10 marks for right answer. There is five marks for negative answer. And you can pass on if you want. I can pass my team. Uh, you can pass to the next question if you want. OK. OK, so uh, timer ready. So no help from the audience, please. Timer ready, please. Yes, one minute. Start, please. It's not showing. Who was the American president who became blind during his tenure due to stroke? Thomas Woodrow Wilson, Warren G. Harding. Warren G. Harding. Who, on 29th November, uh, sorry, uh, Hollenhaus plaque is composed of calcium cholesterol. Calcium. Name the angiometrisis retina. The name angiometrisis retina is associated with George Coates von Hippel. Von Hippel. If LASIK flap is amputated, the patient's refraction become myopic, hyperopic. Hyperopic. Can a colorblind person become a doctor in India? Yes or no? Yes. Which of the following is not associated with increased risk of proliferative diabetic retinopathy? Nerve fiber layer infarct in two or more quadrant and venous bleeding. Not associated. Venous bleeding. Time is up. Time up, hole na ekta sound hole shubi the hoy. Huh? Oh, sorry. Uh, if you can give a. Sorry. It's a reflex. Yes. Yes. Yeah. It's a hangover yeah, of the whole reflex. So you said uh, venous bleeding. Okay. So. No, no. I'll time to pause. I'm coming back. So uh, I'm coming back. So do I have a volunteer to mark the scoring or I'll do it here myself? So uh, first answer, American president, you said Warren Harding. It was Thomas Wilson. You got it wrong, minus five. Second was... Hollenhurst plaque, uh, plaque, you said calcium, it is cholesterol, minus 5. Third, angiometrosis von Hippel was right, so 10. Then, LASIK hyperopic is 10. Then, colorblind, yes, is 10. And then, PDR will be venous bleeding, you said uh, nerve fiber is minus 5. So, you nerve got... Fiber, venous. I said venous, I said venous. I said venous, not nerve fiber. Oh, sorry, so it's... Venous bleeding, I said. So you get 40 minus 40. 10, 30. So 30 for the eye poppers. Thank you. No, five. Thank you. Next for eye candies, it will be Dr. Neha Kumari. can come over here. Choose anyone, any four. So while she is getting prepared for the audience, the rest seven, rest three questions quickly. Phacomorphic glaucoma is an open angle glaucoma or close angle glaucoma? <laughs> and Ectopia lentis from the PGT, not the seniors. Ectopia lentis in Marfa's syndrome, the lens is dislocated superonasally, superotemporally. And I'll not ask the, uh, okay, I'll ask the last question. World Sight Day is observed every second Thursday of October, every fourth Thursday of October. <laughs> so these are all easy questions. So only time is the thing. So we have eye candies team now. Dr. Neha Kumari, your uh, timer, to start, uh, please start the timer and you bang it there. So, uh, in vitreous particles of asteroid hyalosis are composed of hyaline calcium. Calcium. Was Alan Worski's sign is for optic nerve at Drusen's and macular hole? Pass. Marfan syndrome features astigmatism with hyperopia, astigmatism with myopia. Second, astigmatism with myopia. Muller muscle, if uh, is uh, resected, will give two millimeter of eyelid elevation or five millimeter of eyelid elevation. Two mm. Two mm. 
hypofluorescent lesion in fundus means area of hypoautofluorescent lesion in fundus means area of lipofusion, full of lipofusion or devoid of lipofusion. Full of lipofusion. And iris pearl are seen in sarcoidosis or leprosy. Leprosy. Okay, so we come back. This is for eye candies. So first one, calcium, you answered right. So 10. Then uh, Allen Wolski, you passed. Macular. It would be macular hole. Then autofluorescent, you said area full of lipofusion is wrong, it will be area devoid of life effusion. So minus t 5, then Marfan syndrome was right, 10, then Muller muscles was right, 10, and then uh, iris pearl, you said sarcoidosis, it will be leprosy, so minus 5. Yes. You said leprosy. Yes. So you got 4 right and 1 wrong which gives 35 to the eye candies. So next is Dr. Angshuman Dash. Angshuman, shall I choose for you or you choose? No, no you choose. So Angshuman is uh, sporting enough to join in the last moment. So big hand for him. And he is representing eye washers. Timer ready? Time start now, please. Glaucomoflecane is a small anterior subcapsular opacity is made of lens epithelial necrosis, lens epithelial degeneration. Necrosis. Fincham test is used to differentiate between color halos of immature cataract and glaucoma or color halos between dry eye and glaucoma. Angular glaucoma, narrow angular glaucoma and cataract. Okay, I'll come back. Snowflake cataract is found in young age group, older age group. Younger age group. Literal meanings of evia is grapes or cherry. Grapes. Band-shaped keratopathy is chronic deposition of calcium carbonate or calcium hydroxy appetite. Calcium carbonate. Stevie Wonder was blinded by FEVR or ROP. First one. In C3R, collagen cross-linking drops use are vitamin B2 or vitamin B12. B2. Okay, so you answered 7. Uh, so vitamin B2 is right, so 10. Then Stevie Wonder, you passed. No, no, I said first, first one. First oh, first two said. So FEVR is wrong, so minus 5 is ROP. Then band shaped keratopathy, you said calcium carbonate is the other, so another minus 5. Evia is right, so 10. Snowflake, young age group, right, 10. Uh, Fincham test, you said, color halos of? Cataract and glaucoma. So 10 more, and the first one, necrosis, is right. So you answered five correctly and two wrong, so you are scoring 40 for your team. Thank you, Mshuman. So next, we have from the team eye opener, Dr. Gaurang Shegal. Thank you. Timer ready? Re timer start. Red green color blindness is transmitted as X link dominant X link recessive. Recessive. Red color is used in the traffic signal due to its maximum wavelength, minimum wavelength. Maximum. Most common cause of carcinoma associated retinopathy syndrome is small cell carcinoma pass. of lung. Pass, pass. Which of the, uh, which of this following pass through the superior orbital fissure? Ophthalmic vein, ophthalmic artery. Vein. 
presence of CNS tumor in both midline location along with bilateral retinoblastoma is called trilateral retinoblastoma or quadrilateral retinoblastoma. Trilateral. The pathology of phacolytic glaucoma is the blockage. Less particle, Less particle blockage. Sorry, <laughs> let me complete. <laughs> the pathology of the phacolytic glaucoma in the blockage of the trivicular meshwork by lens part material or macrophages? Lens particle. So I'll give you another question because uh, I delayed you probably. So in homos, uh, so which day is celebrated at World's Diabetic Day? 14th November or 7th March? 14th, no 14th November. Hey, and no help. No, I have given him an extra question because uh, he answered before I asked the question. So, so what was the answer? Sure, 14th November. November, sure? Yes. So, he is for the eye opener. So, audience question, uh, while stationed in Crimea, Nightingale developed Crimean fever, a bacterial infection which is now known as? Yes. And sclera is developed from the surface ectoderm or optic nerve mesenchyme. Ectoderm. No, it's from the optic nerve mesenchyme. <laughs> Sorry, the audience, minus five now. <laughs> so uh, I'll come back to your question. So x link was right. So 10, uh, red color 10, carcinoma you passed. Then ophthalmic vein was right. Then the presence of CNS tumor was right. Then pathology was wrong. It is macrophages. It is blocked by the macrophages. And, home, uh, and 7th uh, November, uh, sorry, 14th November is right. So you answered five correctly, one wrong. So 45 for the eye openers. So Jay Shet, again, thank you for joining in. You have no choice left. So I'll start your questions. So Joy Shet is for the eye catches. So your time starts now. Myatro eye drop is 0.01% or 0.001%? 0.01. In 1982, Martina Navratilova suffered from which eye disease? Angle closure glaucoma, ocular toxoplasmosis. Angle closure. Rap lesion, uh, sorry, micro uh, spherophakia uh, is associated with rubella or syphilis. Pass. In medial wall of orbit is not formed by greater wing of sphenoid or lesser pass. wings of sphenoid. Pass, pass. pass. In Wilson's disease, KF ring is found in the corneal stroma or decimates membrane. Decimates membrane. Don't prompt, please. The glaucoma medication associated with decreased conjunctivo goblet cell density is non-selective beta blockers or alpha agonist? Uh, alpha agonist. So uh, in Usher's syndrome, retinitis pigmentosa is associated in deafness of the middle ear abnormality, inner ear abnormality. Inner ear. So right you were. So again, uh, I'm coming. Myatro, you got it right. So 10. Martina Navatrilova had toxoplasmosis, so minus 5. Then uh, syphilis, you passed. It will be rubella, sorry. Uh, the medial wall, uh, you passed. Wilson's disease, you got it right. Glaucoma medication, it will be non-selective beta blockers, so minus 5 for that. And Usher syndrome, you got it right, inner uh, ear abnormality. So you got 3 right and 2 wrong, so that gives 20 points and you passed 1. So coming to the audience question. Pigment deposition along the zonular attachment of the posterior capsule of the lens is called shy stripe or Zentamyer ring. Thank you. So, 20. So thank you very much. Next we'll come to Hans Campbell. So we'll move from the first order again. Dr. Richa Gupta, so what I'll do, I'll give you the thing, you can take a seat here. Cut off from the friends world.
time will start for one minute please time starts now no hint from the audience please we have an audience round at the end please don't help sir yes No, no, twenty second left. So, nystagma she got right, coloboma she got right, ptosis she got right, retinoblastomas ace she has missed. So, judges, we can give, okay, yeah. And uh, another is p septal cellulitis, very well done. So, you got 25 marks. Richa Gupta was for the eye, richer, richer, richer eye catches. So, uh, Dr. Chaitra, the captain, is taking the forefront. So, she was on the other side recently, but now she is here. So, if you are ready, your time starts. Uh, no, no silence, please. Time. Let her concentrate. Some are easy, actually. Team, who is doing the
Dr. Nanda, don't think if the ca cataract is dropping, nucleus is dropping, he manage well, but now he's thinking. So time is up. So Richard has done very well actually. So yeah, these are all easy, cataracts and anisocoria, papilledema. So the next team is from the eye washers, Devargo. So Chaitra, uh, Ashoknanda, Devargo was eye washers. Okay, ready? Time starts now. All sounds Japanese to me. Don't think aloud, please. How many did you get? Two. So you got base disease, you got callosian, you missed nevus, you missed uitis, you had actually easy few letters words, so anyway. So 10 marks for eye washers and last but not the least, who is coming for Dr. Uh, Ashwini Kumar's team? The eye candies. Eye candies. So one minute, you have to be quick. So if you are ready, time starts, you, are you ready? Time starts now. Last one is very easy. No, it's easy, I said. Got it? <coughs> See, if I don't give hints, chicken biryani will never become mutton biryani in the dinner. It's the team from Bihar, so we have to succeed. <laughs> so she got four. She got optic neuritis. She got retinoschisis, very well done. She got xanthalasma and she got amaurosis fugus. Well done. So, 20 points for eye candies. So, without wasting much time, I'll just, for the audience, try few seconds I'll leave and then we'll move on to the next round. Good. Yes. Yes. 
Yes. Well done. Well done to the audience. So the previous minus negative marking has gone to positive marking, but I think Richa has done the audience work as well. So we'll come to the last round. <coughs> we will reverse it now. So can we have the team from the I candies come forward? Yeah, take a seat there. You can watch from here or you can watch from there. Please don't give any answer. I will have audience round. So if you can guess, the time will be one minute. Okay. Even I don't know the answers. You, yeah, a microphone. Yeah. No, you have to guess from the uh, eyes. If you cannot, if you say next, then I will increase the view a bit more, so on. And every time the view is increased, your marks will come down and you have one minute. So the time starts now, very easy. No help, please. No help, please. No, don't think aloud. Well done. So, yes, done. You have got it right. So, he's not sure. So, give a big hand. So, 25 marks for eye candies. So, we'll be doing it for the eye washers. Eye washers. Again, Archana, big hand for Archana because she preponed her train ticket to participate in this. She was due to come tomorrow. Thank you, Archana. Just one second, 25. So your time starts now. Very good. Well done. So you must be a BJP supporter. I didn't get this. No, sir. He is an Indian. <laughs> I washes. Uh, sorry, you were from the I washes. Twenty-five points. So from Anurag's team, it is Himani. Ready? You can uh, view from here. It's very easy, I have kept. So next is the audience round. So everyone is getting 25. This is for I poppers. So next is the audience round. So Ashish, do you watch Karina Kapoor every day? Even if before it's opened, you answered. So I have to, next one, Ashish will not answer. It's for the audience. Ashish will not answer. The other audiences. <laughs> Who says Virat Kohli? Well done. <laughs> so, who is next for the eye catchers? Sorry? Pew steam, uh, you are in the. Okay, so we, don't worry, come, both are easy, come forward. <laughs> Whoever wants to come. So you are for 
What's your name, please? Ankit. Yeah. It's difficult, actually. Are wow. Well done. Extra point should be given. Well done. Well done. Very well done. Come forward. This was a difficult one. No? Not for, <laughs> not for the ladies. Shashi Tharoor is not difficult. For, like for Ashish Karina Kapoor, for you, Shashi. Yeah. So, for the eye openers is uh, Dr. Shefali. You have got a hint. So, all the teams scored 25 points. Next time we have to make this bit difficult. And the uh, unscrambling bit is here, I think. Yes. So, we'll compute the scores. Thank you, everyone. It would have been a great session if Doyle was here. But uh, anyway, uh, we have tried our best and I'll compute the score. And the prize, I will inform uh, the team captain, I will uh, get the address and the prize will be delivered because Dwell couldn't come here. So we will arrange for that. Thank you so much. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Yeah. So if, if the teams can come. Winner, I will just calculate. You can stay back. We will calculate. Yeah. The team score, I will calculate right now, actually. If I get some help, uh, there's a small, thank there's you a, for all the judges. Yeah. There's a small suggestion to Sagato and everybody else that when you unscramble, uh, rather than having it on the screen for people, have it on a paper, paper. so that you don't look at this. Okay. Yeah. And then I can then. After that, I can show it on the... Yeah, so they don't get stressed yeah. out. They yeah, don't yeah. get stressed. Yeah. Yeah. So then they can think. think. Otherwise, all suddenly on the screen, no, it's okay. difficult. Okay. They can Please look at one by one. Okay. The judges...